Good evening, everyone. My name is Utoxin, and this is Utoxin Plays Kerbal Space Program. I have had a couple requests for more videos in this game, and I enjoy playing it, so I figure why not. Um, I uh, got a lot of good feedback on my last video, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so today, we're just going to go into my main world. As you can see, I've got a, a world I created here for just practicing stuff in. Um, but we're going to go over to this one, uh, which is my good old Kerbin, which has some debris and orbit. <laughs> uh, I eventually kind of want to figure out if I can create a spacecraft that can go up and, like, uh, push this stuff out of orbit or something. Um, it will eventually go away as I do more missions. There's only so much debris that can be in the game at once. Um, so, yeah. Um, for today's episode, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about... Um, I've, well, I've heard it called a few different things. Uh, I think I've kind of settled on calling it cross-feed staging. Um, I don't know if that's the correct term for it, but that's what I'm going to call it. So we're going to build a rocket that uses cross-feed staging from scratch. And then I am going to try to put a ship into geosynchronous orbit, or a satellite, basically. Um, I'm going to put a communication satellite up there in geosynchronous orbit. Um, doesn't really serve any purpose in the game, but I figure why not. Um, let's go with... Hmm, let's see, mass. Um, what do we have here? 0 0.08, 0 0.05, 0 0.1. Hmm... Let's see, that's uh, that's a lander. That's not what I want. Okay, so I want one of these three. Let's go with... Let's go with the uh, Stay Putnik, <laughs> which is obviously a play on Sputnik. Um, it's the lightest of the three um, uh, robotic probes, and so the easiest one to get up into orbit, obviously. Um, it needs some maneuvering capabilities, um, so what we are going to do, we are going to give it an engine. Uh, what am I looking for here? Where do they have that stuff? Is it over in here? No, that's RCS fuel, that's RCS fuel. What's the difference between those two? Whoa, oh, that's a, that's a big tank, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's for large ships. Okay. Um, what I'm looking for is the Xenon. Where is the Xenon? Um, that's, yeah, that's liquid fuel. Where have they hidden the Xenon? I've used it before. Where is it? There it is. Okay, there's the Xenon. So we're going to give this thing a couple Xenon tanks. Like so. So there's its xenon. That gives it how much? 1400 xenon. That is a lot of xenon. Um, so now it needs... Which engine is it? It is... That one, I believe. Is that the one that uses xenon? No. Which one uses xenon? Is one of these... Is it over here under utility? Did I miss it? Ah, there it is. The ion electric propulsion system. It uses electric charge and xenon gas for its propellant. So that is the probe's main drive, which will not be activated until it is actually in orbit. Um, it is, has very little power, but it is quite effective. Um, let us go with some battery packs. Actually, let me think. Um, probably actually want to pull these off. We need some, like, structure here. Is there some small structure that... Hmm, maybe that. That gives us somewhere to attach things. Let's put two of those on. Then that below them. Yeah, like that. That gives us a little more room to work with for attaching things to this probe. Um, 
and I know it doesn't matter, but it is going to be a like a communications or GPS satellite, so I want to give it um, this. I want to give it some of these. Let's snap the angles, and it gets three. Let's see, I want to get really close so I can see that I'm putting this on the equator of the ball here. That looks, I know it's not on that line, but it looks like that's fairly straight. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So those are the communications antennas. I don't know if they unfurl in orbit. I know this other one does. Um, and let's see, we also need to give it some batteries. Let's go ahead and stick those upper tier here. So there's its power storage uh, because this drive needs electric charge. And since it needs electric charge, we also need to give it some solar power. Um, what am I looking for here? Where's the... Okay, here we are. Here we are. Um... Let's give it these. Let's move these down here. I kind of want them opposite the... Okay. So if I put those down here, which ones we got? The 4B and the 4. What's the difference between them? Nothing? Yeah, those are identical, so I don't know why they show them as different. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put them down here. So those can open up once we're in orbit. So we now have fuel. We have that. Oh, we should give this an SAS. I don't, I don't think this... Does it come with SAS force? Oh, it has SAS torque. Okay. This is light enough. That should have enough SAS. So that should be our basic... Uh, satellite. That should be sufficient. So at this point we need to put a stack decoupler, which looks huge compared to the probe. It doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really fit per se, but it still works, you know, from a technical perspective. So let me zoom out now. Um, for our stage to actually get us to uh, you know, get us up to approximately the right altitude. I want to use, and I've been thinking, I, I want a fairly light upper stage, as, as light as we can reasonably get it. So what, okay, that's, okay, that's good. Let's go with two, let's see how much, these are 360, that's 180. Oh, well, if we go with two, I should just go with, that for my upper stage. That should give me plenty of fuel, especially if I go with... I just kind of need a dinky little engine, like that one. Yeah. That should be all the thrust we really need um, to get us up. Is that a vectoring at all? Yes, that vectors. Okay. Um, it vectors, and I also am going to throw an SAS module uh, right there, just to give me a little bit of extra maneuverability. Between those two, they can probably uh, shift this upper stage pretty easily. Um, I hope. <laughs> now we need to build the bottom stage. This is our actual... Uh, the stage that will lift us into orbit uh, needs to have a lot of delta V and be able to lift this upper section. So, what do we want to do with it? Um, I think we are going to go with a tricoupler. Um, oh, I don't think. No, tricouplers don't stage. So, I need a stack decoupler right there, then a tricoupler. Now, 
what do we want to put down here? Let us go with. Well, let's see. I was going to actually. We're gonna. We're not gonna do that because I wanted to show how to do the uh, crossfeed staging. That's right. That's right. That was my plan. Um. So, um, we're gonna go with a really heavy launch vehicle here, just just to make sure this can all get into orbit. Um. So we will throw in a Rocco Max adapter. I'm going to need to raise this up. Yeah, it's probably far enough. Then I need... Let's see. Is this... Is there a larger... Let's see, it's 14. Yeah, I think that's the... I don't think there's... Oh, there it is. Ah! Ah! There's a big fuel tank. That's a big fuel tank. Um, yeah, I think probably just one of those. Two of those would be just absolute overkill. Um, I am going to raise this a little bit just so I have room to work down here. So what we will then do, we've got one giant fuel tank there. Um, I'm going to go with four-way symmetry. And we are going to put on radial decouplers. Actually, let's do this. Here's a trick I've learned, and I always forget to use it. We're, going to, we're not going to do any symmetry yet. We're going to put a decoupler on. Then we're going to build one engine here. So let's go grab another fuel tank. Like that. Yep, that's good. Then... That gets, let's see, is there a large, there's the large advanced SAS, let's see, let's pop that off. I know this is probably not, whoa, that's really, that's the, oh, I didn't grab the right one, there we are. That's probably not technically necessary, but I like just being sure. I wish there were large SAS for these, but we'll just have to have large control wings. And um, Actually, let's see. For our bottom stage, just to give us a little more control, um, I want propulsion. Where's the RCS fuel? Oh, that's right, they have large uh, tanks. So let's go with that tank. Since we have so much lift power, and we're going to have even more lift power in a little bit, I will go with two large SAS, or RCS fuel tanks. Then, um, I'm looking to see, do we have, yeah, I think, I think these are really the only, I don't know what the, I don't know what this seven linear RCS port really is. Is it just, uh, I'm not sure, it doesn't really explain, it's a little tiny thing, so I don't know, I'm going to go with these, these standard RCS ports, because I understand them better, and yeah. Um, we will place RCS on the upper stage, just so we get the good angle, you know, we're going to have some at each end. Um, once we drop this lower stage, it won't have any fuel, but I don't care. I'll have enough uh, torque from the various SAS up here that I won't need it. Um, put some right here. And then there will also be some down here. We're going to have three sets of RCS thrusters distributed along the rocket. That should give us good maneuverability. Okay, now back to building our side stages. Um, at this point, I need, or I, I want, a, um, is it fat? Yeah, it's that. Uh, not technically necessary, but it makes it look better. Then we need a rocket on the bottom down here. And we are going to be using the mainsail. These are really big rockets with lots of thrust, and they should get us into orbit no problem. 
So there, that is the basic stage for the side of the rocket. So at this point, we pull it off, we've got our uh, symmetry on, so then we pick it back up and reattach it to the rocket. And lo and behold, we get four rockets. Uh, let's see, I want it down about there. there, I think. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. So there, oh, let me go ahead and throw a mainsail into the center there. So, this would work right now. Um, well, I'm going to have to probably do a little bit of adjustment to the staging. But th this would function. But since I'm showing the cross-feed staging, what we're going to do is we're going to take this external fuel duct and I'm going to say that this engine and this engine, or this tank and this tank, I want to burn out first. I want them to get used up first. So we start with our cross feed here and feed it over into that tank. Oh, and I had... that's too much symmetry on. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it'll let me do two-way symmetry with these, the way they're set up. Yeah, it's going to make me do symmetry, some symmetry, or none at all. Uh, it make, make me do four-way or none at all, so we'll just have to do this all manually. So we're going to do it from there to there. You can see, if you get in really close, that the arrows say that fuel flows that way. So that's what we want. Now, we go to this tank and do the same thing. Put a feed line there, and feed it over to there. So now, this tank feeds into this tank, and this tank feeds into that tank. But, I also want my main central engine to burn the longest. So what we do at this point, is we grab more feed lines, and it's really hard to get an angle on this, unfortunately, because of how things are placed. Put one there, it feeds up into there. And do the same thing over here. And clip through the tank so that we can see where we want it. Put one there, feed up to there. So now what happens is that at the start, all five engines will be pulling fuel from these two side tanks. So they'll get used up pretty quickly, but they'll be feeding all five engines, and these three tanks will be staying full. Then, once those tanks are empty, we'll drop those off, and fuel will start being fed from, you know, all three, the three remaining engines will feed from these two side tanks simultaneously, uh, causing them to drain equally and leaving the center tank full. When those are empty, we'll drop them off, lightening our load even further, and leaving us with a full central fuel tank and a really big rocket and hopefully that will put us in orbit uh, and have plenty of fuel left over. Um, so let's see, let us, uh, I want to do a couple more things here um, that seem to help. Let us grab the separatrons. Where are they? There they are. Turn on symmetry. It should fix itself. Yep, okay. So I want these, um, oh, there we go, um, let's see, I want to be like, um, oh, nope, too much, three, four, yeah, I like about that much tilt on them, and I want to place these, hmm, We'll go kind of high on the tanks. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I like having a point of reference for where I put the leg so that they're even um, on the other side of the tank. Um, so I placed it kind of right there. So we're going to alt click. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I placed its upper leg kind of right there. So what those will do is when I stage those tanks, when I when I separate them, these 
fire and kind of push the tank up and off to the side, um, giving me more room. Uh, hopefully it won't be necessary, but it's better safe than sorry. So now, let's get the staging on this figured out. We're going to have to do some messing around here. Um, first, let's also get my launch stability enhancers. they're kind of square. I think that's technically square. Yeah, yeah, that's square. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now we just need to do staging. Okay, those fire first. Let's move the separatrons up into there. Just uh, let's give the two sets of... I'm confused. I need to see. Okay, yeah, those are going to... Oh, that's going to be annoying, but okay. We will just move those all into the same group for now. I'll have to split them up. Now, I want all my engines to fire at the same time as I release the stability modules. So we'll put them all down there. So all five engines, that's not all five, there's the central engine. There we go. All five engines will fire at takeoff. Then the these two tanks are the ones we need to separate first. So we will add a stage here, looking for... Is it... It's double click, okay. So this one and this one need to be in that stage, which means, let's see... Let's get the separatrons for this one first. So that separatron. And that separatron. Now come over here. And it is that one. And that one. There we go. So those are the, that's the first stage that separates. Now we need to do the next stage, which should be those two. And okay, so I basically just need to combine these two stages. There we go. That's those. Okay. Then at that, and then after the main engine burns out, we fire that stage. Which, let's, oh, just for the heck of it, we're going to put some separatrons on for that, too. Again, this is definitely not necessary, but it's extremely minimal weight. And this upper stage is so overpowered. <laughs> okay, I want to flip those around that way. These ones I do want firing that way. Okay, I'm going to give them a lot of spin. There we go. There should be four of them around the rocket. Yep. Um, I want those to fire here. Yeah, when I separate that stage. That leaves us with our upper stage, which is pretty simple. Not too worried about it. Okay. That is our rocket. So you can see how I set up the cross-feed staging. Um, and yeah. With that, we are going to call this... Hmm, what do I want to call this? Um, it's a... let's call it... Hmm, oh, uh, Kerbal... Com 1. This is the Kerbal Com 1, Kerbal Com 1 satellite. Uh, I, I want to pick a reasonable name for it because it will actually be the name for this satellite in the mission list um, forever. So I want something that makes some sense. And with that, we will save it. And it is time to launch. So out to the launch pad we go. And there's debris from my first flight still there. Probably just the uh, stabilizers. And I'm having my wonderful frame rate issues as it loads the launch pad. There we go. And it should settle in in just a second here. Come on. There we go. There we go. Now we're settled in. Turn on the SAS. 
Um, and I think we are ready to go. So, throttle up. Um, let me, there we go. Had to switch some other windows around. Okay. And launching the KerbalCom 1 satellite in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and lift off. Whoa, that is a wobbly rocket. I didn't put any struts on this rocket. Um, this may be a problem. And my rockets are overheating. Having to... There we go, there we go. Okay, um, wow. Um... Um, this is not good. <laughs> um... Okay, that... Well, that launch was a failure. Um, we need some support struts on this thing so it doesn't shake itself apart. <laughs> um, I'm also debating shifting... Um, we're going to go ahead and just say end that flight. There's no one on board, so whatever. I'm not going to bother waiting for it to crash. I'm going to make a few tweaks to our rocket design here. First of all, we need some support struts because that was horrific. Um, let's see, let's do... I want radial. Do that to stabilize the upper stage. Uh, it'll tie it into all of the rockets below. We will also do the same thing from here up to there stabilizing it to yet another point. Then we are going to stabilize these stages to each other. There we go. And one at the bottom of each. There we go. That should help. That should stiffen this rocket up quite a bit. Um, I am also going to swap out the... Wait, is there a non-vectorable engine for the Rockamax? I don't think there is, actually. Mm, never mind. It'll keep the vectorable engines. I wish I could turn that feature off. Um, well, maybe that'll be enough to stabilize things to the point that we're not... Mm, now nah, we'll give it some aerodynamic controls as well. For these outer stages, at least. We'll go, let's see, wow, that is, it's really odd angles that it's putting stuff at, I don't know what to think about that, um, let's find a reference point we can use, those are on opposite sides, so if I go, out until it flips over to the next. So like that. That's pretty good. That'll give me decent, decent aerodynamic controls. Okay. All right. Well, there are some quick modifications. Let us save that. Go back out to the launch pla platform. One thing, hmm, when I get out there, I'm going to check the map. I might want to wait a minute on the platform, because there is probably falling debris still, and that could be bad. <laughs> okay, are we settled in? Now we're settled. Okay, where is... Okay, yeah, it looks like there's no debris. All right. There we are, back at my rocket. Turn on the SAS. Throttle up. Um, I've got a chart I'm trying to look at to see what my suggested velocity is by altitude because there's actually uh, it is it is there's certain efficiencies that you you know that if you go over a certain speed it becomes less efficient. So whoa, whoa. that is some cats freaking out in the background. Someone knocked something over. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, let us go. Um, this time, eh, to heck with the countdown. And go. That's a little better. That's a lot more stable, actually. Okay. Progress. Oh, and I am accelerating way too quickly. Okay, 3,000 feet. I want to be... Yeah, I'm already over my... Okay. We are about due for our first set of rockets to drop off. This still sounds really loud to me. That worked beautifully. We are at 6,000 feet, going fast enough. 8,000, we want to be going 215. We're already well on our way there, so, okay. Huh. Here we go. Um, not quite time to start my gravity turn yet. Still, you know, still rocking a little bit, but we're a lot more stable than we were on that first launch. I'm pretty sure we're going to reach orbit with this flight. Um, wow, we are really accelerating a lot faster than we need to, but I'm already at half throttle, basically, so this is going to be a, a, a nice, efficient flight. Um, I'm going to start my gravity turn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take it over about to there. I don't need RCS yet. No, RCS, thank you. Okay. Okay, second stage is about to burn out. When that happens, I turn off the SAS to avoid weird fluctuations. Then I turn it back on afterwards so that I uh, don't go spinning off you know, in random directions. Okay, still accelerating. What is our orbit looking like? Okay, um, and we are at... Okay, going for engine shutoff. We are in great shape, and we are drifting because of the atmosphere. I'm going to let the RCS kick in. How's our RCR monopropellant? Oh, we got tons of monopropellant. Oh, we're going to burn through it quick if we keep doing that, though. Come on, stabilize. Stabilize. We're technically into space now, so it should have a better time stabilizing us. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Turn off the RCS now. Um, I want to turn this into an orbit, so I need to add a maneuver right about here and extend this out. Um, a little further, a little further. What are we at? 85 by 123, good enough to start. Uh, let's take it up a little higher. 91, okay. So there's my maneuver. Now I need to turn off... Oh, Nope, turn off. Uh, turn back on. I need to get tipped over so I'm ready for my burn. Yeah, those RCS are almost critical with this stage. In fact, I think they are critical. Okay. Turn it on right there. Okay, we are 43 seconds from our burn. And I'll wait till about 20 seconds from our burn and then start. This engine is quite powerful, so that should be about right. We've still got tons of fuel left. This should be able to get us up to our geosynchronous altitude. All right, starting our burn. Yeah, I judged it about right. Okay, good. That is so wobbly. <laughs> That's okay, though. I don't mind a little wobble. Okay. Okay, orbit is starting to widen now. Coming quicker now. What? Did I just overheat my engine? if I have enough delta V with this little rocket to get us. Get us back on track here. 
Okay. Okay, come on. You can do it, little engine. I am I am pretty sure I overheated my engine because that was a full throttle. I should know better than to do that with the main sails. Okay. Come on, little rocket. You can do it. I really didn't want to have to use it at this stage, but well, needs must. Come on. Okay. Okay, it'll get us there. Okay, that should be... That is an orbit. Okay. So, let us kill that maneuver. Don't need it anymore. Um, this one... Looks like, yeah, that will fall back to... That'll fall, fall back to ground, so that's good. So, um, geosynchronous orbit is 2868.75 kilometers so we have quite a quite a bit of altitude to gain I don't know if we have the Delta V for it but we will hope so let's add a maneuver here so push this out let's see what are we at 24 okay so that's close well, we might. We might have the 26, 2898. That's close. Bring it back in just a hair. 2882, 2880, nope, 2796. Eh, this is so finicky. 2858. That is close enough for a first approximation. So, we want to get lined up with the target here, which at the moment is directly retrograde, but as we go around Kerbin, that will change. Oh, no, 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 no. There, slow down. Slow the spin. Slow the spin. There we go. Turned on right there. There we go. Okay. We have 16 minutes until our burn, so we're going to speed up time. There we go. And when we get down to about 2 minutes, I'm going to drop the time compression down. Come on. Now I'm getting a little bit of frame rate issues here. It's kind of weird. I wonder if it's... I've got the textures on the planet turned way up. I wonder if it's having issues with that. Okay. One minute until burn. Um, this is going to be a long burn. I'm going to start it now. Oh, actually. It's fairly accurate on its prediction, but eh, close enough. We're burning a little early, but it'll still work. centered on our line there. Okay. Okay, this rocket may still have enough fuel to get us there. That makes me happy. Um, and if we need to, we can make final orbital, in fact, probably will make final orbital corrections with this actual satellite stage. Um, this is going to be a long episode, but that's okay. Purple Space Program compresses pretty well in my experience, so that's good at least. Start throttling down. Okay. I'm going to stay on course actually until now. Where does that put us? Okay, 2660. We need 2868. That's a burn. 28. That is close enough for now. That is almost perfect, actually. It's only a few hundred meters off. Okay. So then let us get rid of that maneuver. And out here, add another maneuver to round up our orbit. 
Okay, so we're looking to just round it out. Um, 20, okay, need a little more. Okay, I'm gonna do the final tuning by hand probably because it's gonna be really finicky and it's gonna be hard to do. 28,800, whoop, 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 right there, close enough. Okay, that's another 400 meters per second of delta V. We've definitely got the fuel for that, so that is good news. Let me get oriented here. Oh, turn off the SAS, kind of hard to manipulate the craft with that on. Where is my current maneuver target. There it is, right over here by our retrograde burn, as I expected. Okay, come on, come on. Stop turning. There we go. There we go. Yeah, remember I have no RCS, thr RCS fuel on this portion of the rocket, so it's actually only using SAS modules. There we go. Okay. Now we have a burn in an hour and 21 minutes of game time, so time to speed up again. <laughs> and away we go, away from the planet. Okay, time is ticking down quick. Um, okay, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down. We're at 21 minutes, okay. Get us down to about two to three minutes here. Okay. One minute until burn. I'm going to wait until about ten seconds before burn for this one because this is not as big a burn as the last one. Um, oh, I need to slow us down to real time here though. Actually, it's just, it was about it was accurate for this, so we're going to go at 18 seconds is when we'll go. We want to do half of our burn before the mark, half of it after. So, thrust. There we go. You see our periapsis coming up quick. We are right on target. Uh, that weird engine sound glitch when you're in the map view. Okay. Coming along good. Got plenty of fuel left. Okay. I want to push that to 2868-ish. I want to wait until I'm closer to here, though. So let us drop that. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we are very close to a geosynchronous orbit here. We are only a few thousand meters off, which is awesome. And we still have a ton of fuel in that upper stage. We still got about half of our fuel. Um, at this point, uh, I kind of want to, I should have dropped that stage earlier, because now that stage is in my orbit. Hmm. That actually is a little bit... This is when I wish I could clean up space junk, you know, space debris. Because <laughs> I don't really want it in my orbit. Um, it might collide. So, oh well. Okay, we're coming up on that. How far are we at? We're seven minutes out from our periapsis. So let's speed time up a little bit. I want to get... Like about a minute out before I do my next burn. Okay, speed it up 10x. Yeah, there we go. Coming along. Drop speed. There we go. Oh, 
I'm not going to get real finicky about this orbit, I just would like it to actually be fairly circular. I know that's not going to happen perfectly. Let's see. Let me shift my positioning here just a touch. There we go. So 2868.75. We are so close. Um, I am going to drop this stage now. Um, I didn't put retro rockets on this one as I recall, which I should have. I didn't think about it. Yeah, there's no retro rockets on this one, so it'll just drift along behind us slowly. Um, but oh well. Um, a collision is fairly unlikely, and it will eventually disappear as other space debris shows up, so eh, I'll probably be alright. So, let's go ahead and drop that stage. Ooh, wow, it actually separated pretty energetically. Okay, let's take a look at our orbit now. So, ooh, wow, that actually gave us a kick. <laughs> um, all right, well, I need to retro burn a bit then. Let us spin around. There's our retro burn. Um, oh, I need to light this engine. There we are. Okay, so I'm looking for 2868. So we'll look, for, we'll look for 69 right now. Okay. Okay, 69.25. Sixty-nine. Okay. Well, that's... We're at 1,008.8. 1,008.9 is the actual geosync orbital velocity. So, let's see. Let me... Wow, how far away the debris is... How far away is that debris? I'm a little nervous. It is moving away. Okay. All right, we're good. Okay, we are nearly in geosync orbit here. Uh, 27 minutes, so let's speed up. Briefly speed up even further. Okay. Come on. Let me, actually, let me stop and think. Let's see. 2869... So I need to burn prograde. Let's spin around to do a light prograde burn. Oh, I need to uh, unfurl my solar panels here too. Uh, my electric charge is dropping. So let's do that. Drop out of map view. This should look pretty cool. Um, I've done this before on another satellite. In fact, let me. Ah, those do extend. Awesome. So let's get those out. My comm satellite is now ready to communicate. And we will extend these panels. There we go. So my electric charge is now climbing rapidly as my panels orient themselves. Beautiful. So there we go. I've got my battery packs on there to hold the charge. I've got tons of xenon gas. I've only used one unit of the xenon gas so far. So, let's see. Oh yeah, I was getting lined up for that burn. That's still a few minutes away. Let's speed that up and get over there. Did 
again. I'm not going for perfect, I just want an actual roundish orbit. Okay. So, I need to quickly adjust over. So this is at 28, 69. So, there. That is close enough for me. We now have a COM satellite in geosynchronous orbit, or close enough that I don't care. Um, hooray! Let us, let's see, I believe the proper thing to do is to point it at north. Uh, you point it at polar north, and then it will stay oriented the same way to the planet. Um, so you can see, where is the, where's the planet? There's the planet, and there's the plane of the ecliptic. <coughs> So as you can see, it's oriented, pointing north, which will keep it uh, aligned properly. There we go. I am quite satisfied with that. So there you go. You have seen me build a crossfeed staging rocket, and we have launched, after only one unsuccessful try, uh, launched into orbit, uh, had a slight mishap on our orbital insertion, when we overheated our mainsail engine, but we recovered just fine. Um, we've got some space debris out here in orbit with us, but it hopefully won't be an issue. Uh, let me spin around to the light side of the... Ugh, when you're in this orientation, it just doesn't quite look right. There we go. And there we have it, the KerbalCom-1 satellite. And uh, with that, I just wanted to show one other thing that I forgot to mention in my first video. We come out to the map here, and we've got this lovely Kerbin system with Kerbal there. And then we have the moon here. Then if we come out further, we have Minmus, which is a secondary moon much further out. Then we come out even further, and we have an entire solar system we can explore here. Um, there is a lot to do. Um, you've even got this, uh, like, Pluto-like pseudo-planet, uh, out here, which has a very, uh, what do they call that? That's a very, oh, there's a name for an orbit that's not close to round. I forget what it is. Um, I, I don't remember right now. Someone will tell me in the comments, I'm sure. But yes, there we go. Um, in my practice world, I actually have a satellite that I placed out at about, um, you know, just outside this orbit. It's so about 14 million kilometers, I believe, from the sun, uh, whatever they call it in the Kerbin system. Um, anyway, there we go. Thank you for watching. Um, we are now going to do Escape and Space Center which leaves our flight in progress, and we can see it here. We have the KerbalCom-1 satellite, which is orbiting Kerbin, and it has been in space for almost two and a half hours now. You can see it right there. In fact, let's, let's quickly show you something. I want to fly that mission right now. I forgot I wanted to show you this. Come on, switch into the mission. Switch in. I'm um, getting frame rate issues. There we go. There we go. Okay. Where is the planet? There it is. Let us accelerate time by quite a bit. Um, so if you watch the features on the planetary surface, we are orbiting. We're staying over the same place on Kerbin all the time. Now, because we're not in a perfect geosynchronous orbit, that will slowly drift, but that's the idea. Anyway, let's get back out of the mission. Uh, do not hit end flight. Say Space Center. And there we go. So, thank you for watching, everyone. Um, sorry this went on so long, but um, yeah. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you... Oh, I especially wanted to thank um, Kyle X Rex who commented on my previous Kerbal Space Program video, 
he recommended a game called Star Made, which is kind of a hybrid of Kerbal Space Program and Minecraft. Um, and I was going to do an introductory video on that game, but when I tried to record it, um, Fraps had issues with it and like made lots of small files that were missing bits. Um, so I'm not sure if that was my fault or the game's fault or what was going on there. But um, I have tried the game. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Kyle X Rex, for the suggestion. Um, I still hope to do some videos of that game if I can figure out what the issues were. Um, so look for that maybe in the future. Um, for now, my name is Utoxin. This has been Utoxin Plays Kerbal Space Program, and I will see you next time.